the recipe I'm using here is the one linked in the description, but with a few changes. Like instead of wheat flour, I use a cup of pecan meal and a cup of oatmeal that I make by grinding up rolled oats in the food processor. And then I also double the amount of baking powder to make up for the change in ingredient. I use closer to the one teaspoon of cinnamon in the range given in the recipe. I started making the recipe for one batch of banana bread, but I'm actually making two, so you'll see a little bit of inconsistency on the ratios that I'm adding here, but I am actually making the double batch. The recipe is for a single batch. Oh, I'm about to be really struggling with some bananas. They, their level of ripeness made it to where they were just falling apart as I tried to separate them. It's a bit rough. My husband already said that no one has probably struggled with peeling bananas as much as I did while recording this. So the recipe I think recommended doing the wet separately so that you don't over mix the bananas so I'm just trying to roughly crush them up without getting them to a smooth consistency. You want nice big banana chunks in your banana bread. I've also used a potato masher for that and it worked quite well. I usually go for the fork, but that's potato masher is a valid option too. The recipe calls for milk. It doesn't really matter what kind. I've been using coconut milk. I have used pecan milk in the past. I think I've used almond milk in the past. It's just up to you and your preference. I don't think it makes a massive difference in the flavor of the bread, so just do whatever you have handy. Now, I don't know why I just did vanilla, but yeah, add vanilla, I guess. Um, you can go ahead and add your coconut oil before you add vanilla. That's fine. I'm not sure why I waited. Then you gotta add your egg. I'm not very good at cracking eggs, so I always end up with a little bit on the stove or counter and all over my fingers. So this is not a demonstration of professional egg cracking. You just gotta mix it a bunch, but not too much, because then you'll make your bananas all mushy, mushier. Yeah. And for like a lot of baking, it's like, oh, you slowly add in the dries and mix it in. It doesn't seem to really matter for banana bread. So I just kind of pour it all in and just gently just mix it all together. 
This is not a highly professional banana bread, it's just a good enough banana bread. So then you gotta coat your baking dish with something. I usually do avocado oil and just spread it around. You could do butter, you could do probably any other kind of oil or fat, or just line it. But avocado oil seems to work pretty well for my glass dishes. pour it in since I did a little batch, just kind of roughly eyeball whatever it even looks like split up between the two. So this is the fun bit. You can just add whatever you want to banana bread and it generally tastes pretty good. Um, lately I've been adding blueberries and or rolled oats over the top. Sometimes I'll mix the blueberries right into the batter so that's just throughout the bread. I've done cocoa powder before and that was fine. I plan on doing chocolate chips at some point in the future. But yeah, you could just add whatever you feel like and it'll probably be pretty good. I think the traditional thing is like nuts of some sort. And this bread looks a little bit less pretty than normal traditional flour breads. It doesn't get that nice crackly surface. So I find adding something to the top makes it have a little bit more of like a finished look once it's out of the oven. And four minutes later, it's done. Now, it looks very nice coming in the oven, but I've found that once it's in the fridge, it does sink a bit and deflate some of its nice puffed up appearance, but it still tastes delicious. And thank you for watching.